Wow. Hey, we just popping off. We just sitting away. A nice rhythm, man, right here in Drive Nation, man. You know, we got a nice victory lap we've been making. You know, just crossing them, uh, crossing them sticks, man, bringing the family together. <laughs> Who's this guy, man? Shout out to the drop, drop, chat, 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 chat. Hey, what about Prince Madoc? Don't mind us, you know. It's, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Hey, shout out to Dragon Chow. Always dropping that drop, man. Uh, why does Prince Madoc favor Shrek in their perception? Oh, man. Why does he favor Shrek? Who's Shrek? They can call Shrek an ogre, right? Oh, an ogre? <laughs> and my brother's popping off, man. Popping off, man. And man, he burned it today. Just in case we need it. Hebrew word of the day. Barber. Swan. God. Swan nights. What does an ogre have to do with Swan Knights? The legends of the ogre. <laughs> the day, Dune de Mites, Tuatha de Dana Danu, or Manana, or May of America. Yeah, all that goes together, right? We're just talking about the barbers, all oh, Hebrew word of the day. Swan, got it. Swan boats, all right. The ships are shaped like a swan with its sails like the wings of a beautiful gliding white swan. After the defeat of Sylvanus to Texas, the members of the royal family were sent back to Europe, back to Europe, right? So you might do a genealogy test and ask family that's popping up in Europe because you were sent back to Europe, right? <laughs> but also because we've been holding down these vortexes for a long time. <laughs> All right. But just know that they came here, came from here first, you know what I'm saying? And we were always here. This is, this is, uh, you know, this is, uh, the spark off, you know what I'm saying? The environment for us. This is where we popped off. This is where the spark is, is uh, you know, shining from, you know what I'm saying? So we always come back home. Why the giant ogre heads? We were talking Maine of America. Where the giant ogre heads of the Almec are found, right? Hey, shout out to all the new wave surfers, man. I know we got a lot of Brand new wave surface in the building, man. I just want to get it. I know we the office seems like we don't pay attention to you. Like, man, I'm in the back of the class. I'm in the back of the class, but I do see you and I do see y'all, uh, you know, in your comments. And we're going to get some of these comments today. And I just want to say I appreciate y'all for surfing the wave, man, and seeing what we do at Drop Nation. You know what I'm saying? Whatever sparks your interest, whatever gets you over here. You know, we're a big family, man. We we dig on it. You know, we do a lot of things. We come together for each other, you know. You know, we got over 500 code keepers out there that always, you know, give enough to support whoever needs it. In this case, my bro, Yosef, got his water flowing, got that hot water, got his pipes done. Man, no matter what it took, we had enough because of you. And that's what we mean by hitting that mark, man, hitting that hitting that sign, you know what I'm saying? X marks the spot. Shout out to Steven Torres, M-H-O-E, man, most high over everything. Cause Exodus 20 got us in code. Sean Percy, hey, hi. One try, one vibe. We all we got, most high over everything, man. We come together to do what needs to be done. When it comes to the try, I be y'all know what you talking about. My commitment to my Aquayam and our keys is real by any means. I said, much of our tribe, we got you. You know, 
This is Drive Nation. We spread out all across the plane, man. We know when that, uh, <laughs> that dragon sign go up, man, you know what I'm saying? It's time to fly. It's time to coon. We fly together. We ride together. We Drive Nation. Hey, what's up with this shirt? Shout out to my bro, Dragon Child, dropping, major dropping the drop chat. Hey, you know, get up in the drop chat. You know what I'm saying? As I can say, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Why does Magok favor Shrek? Huh? Why does he favor Ogre, right? Because they want you to know. <laughs> they want you to know that the giant ogre heads are the almond. Ogres are almonds. Ogres are almonds. Ogres are almonds. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we just popping off, man. So it's great to do our, our lineage, our flow, you know, especially ours. So when they put these, uh, the Fing Fam Fung, oh man. Oh man. Several like minded members of his race departed their peaceful home world centuries ago with the intention of conquering other planets. Landing on Earth in ancient China, the crew used their natural shape shifting powers to mimic human form, intending to enter human society and by their time before beginning their conquest. The council, Fum, instead, he elected to serve as a backup in case something went wrong and was placed in a tomb and given a herb that sent him into a deep slumber so that he might sleep while this crew entered his world. Man, what does it mean, Dragon Chap? Sound like that tarry mob, man. It's up the real like, L type of soul, man. Got pot drops, dragon child, pain popping off, man. You got a lot more than this up there, too, man. It's all happening. Peculiar joy, much of how the spiral continues. The water, hawa for everything. Just wanted to give the A hop to the home team. Con drop, Chef Condi, and drop nation. Project Blue, <laughs> ouch here, baby. <laughs> the water for your prayers and AI, man. That's peculiar joy. That's our, that's our aqua. She's popping off in the drop chat, 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 chat. And she getting linky, y'all, oh, man. I have mama, what it do? She buy her wah. Hello, 9 1 you. He said, Shalom, fam. I can only post quickly and check this. Later, because I'm at work. Okay, okay, okay. What it do? What it do? Drop it on us, man. He said, "Does anyone know of Passover Pesach? Uh, Non-Christian <laughs> Torah-only gatherings around the country. I'm in Colorado. First of all, man, Baruch Pesach is going down. It's going up. You know what I'm saying? It's going way up. And you know, whether you celebrate it, you know, whatever you do. Uh, I know a lot of camps, a lot of different other people celebrate it. I think March 19th." Um, I don't have an exact date, you know what I'm saying, that I'm gonna do it per se. I don't know if I'm gonna do it the week after that or what. I'll let you know when we doing it, you know, as a as a tribe, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I mean? But either way, you know, just know that we popping off because we talk freedom, we're talking redemption, we're talking Exodus, Managa, we're talking Hawaii, you know, um, allowing us to pass safely, pass over safely was with salvation and a secure breath, man. And as long as we got our secure breath, you know what I'm saying, then we got existence. We got Hawa. We got our breath security. So Baruch Pasak, it feels good. You know what I'm saying? We we surfing the most beautiful wave out here. You know what I'm saying? Just look around. You know what I mean? Like no matter what what you looking at, no matter what you no matter what you're looking for, man, Drive Nation is um in my eyes, you know, what with what I witnessed, Managi, there is no more, you know, beautiful, more, more yapa, more pure water, you know, to swim in than, you know, what Hawaii's done with, with us at Drive Nation. You know what I'm saying? So I'm proud of each and every one of y'all, all the code keeps out there. You know what I'm saying? Allow why and we do it for you. You know what I mean? Go ahead and get cozy, fall back, man. It's just a Nice little call back. You know, I just want to acknowledge a few people, acknowledge some great comments and surf the wave, man, with the, uh, you know, 
some Agartha drop, man. We're going to dig on uh, some some underground stuff, man. You know, we're going to have some fun. We're also going to get a nice little Templar dismount, man, and even a nice Caramel dismount. Left the Cootie Mayo. We're falling back, man. Ty Battle got some drop. We're going to share some of that. We're just enjoying the flow, man. I appreciate every single one of my Nagas surfing way. Hey, man. Exodus 20 got us in code. X marks the spot. X marks the spot. I mean, all this talk about all that Confederate flag and Confederate seas. We're just talking about what it means, man. Not what you're charged up about and when you can pick up the story and how you feel about such and such and such. I'm talking about Phineas crisscrossing on your head bone, man. 2024. What's really happening, man? Who got the drop? Is it just about a eclipse? I mean, Tacoom today was talking about an eclipse. The Black Sun prophecy and all that. But with that came the comet. With that came the dragon. And his name means shooting star, right? <laughs> Feeding is Chris Ross on your head, bone. You know? And we, hey man, we in cruising altitude, man. Fall back, man. We circling the way, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Swarthy Charles, yeah. yeah I just wanted to have another look at this uh, Swarthy Charles, man. Don't mind me. Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, man. You know? So when all this is going down, I'm not, we're talking chicken magua, we're talking treaties and all this, man. We know that Swarthy Charles has swarthy enemies, you know. This is what, 1500, right? So Swarthy Charles is looking for you, just like Columbus, right? Just like Estebanico. It seems like, you know, Estebanico or Little St. Stephen, you know, or you know, as a more, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it seems like as a more, man, who they say was the first uh, more or non-native or, you know, to enter into how we cool, to enter into this New Mexico territory. We're going to talk about the Coronado expeditions another time. Yeah, we popping off. Swarthy Charles has swarthy enemies. And Caramel's about to break down a lot of a great drop on that, you know, he got a great book, go get his last drop, you know, talking about, you know, this Virginia situation, and tie it all together, my naga, saw water, get that water, left the coolie mayo. <laughs> yeah, man, that's why I man. Just like in uh, Seas of Gold, right? Esteban's, you know, really under the you know what I'm saying, power of this Pope, of this Emperor, you know what I'm saying, of of all these Nagas over there. Coming over here, looking for the promised land and all the goodies like the cities of gold. Even in the cartoon, Esteban is fighting the Almec. He's, he's flying the door like he's Maverick and Top Gun. He's doing turns and flips and dives. Suddenly he just got top flight school, top flight of the world. You know what I'm saying? Maverick training, he's going crazy. Shoot, you know what I'm saying? Trying to outrun the Almec ships and all this stuff. So my nugget, Almec. Esteban's fighting the Almec, which means that these are some swarthy enemies, man. So who's his swarthy enemies, you know? Seems like whoever, you know, is right where the spot is, you know what I'm saying? Because X is marking the spot. And if you in the spot, you know, they want to make it real uncomfortable for the world that are holding you. They lose. I mean, the Royals, right? The 
Royals, my noggers. Let's hold down. Kalelu. Come on, man. We we been here. This is a thousand years before the Chicken Marvel Wars, my naga. The she Kamavas. Because we're talking X marks the spot. And you already know, man, that the Almond called themselves she you combine this with the shia she dynasty the mongol history and genghis khan invading the she the tangu <coughs> wow popping off man so genghis khan is invading the tangu the she fuck the the spaniards right and the swarthy uh <laughs> Europeans, right? This is Charles, and they, they definitely call him the first European emperor of the Incas. So the first European over here is a uh, Swarthy Charles. It appears that these are the same, you know, connections with these uh, Moorish, you know, what I'm saying uh, treaties of pieces and friendships. And all we're saying is that if you're more ish might not be more than this. You know what I'm saying? If you're more ish, you might not be, you know, more than, more than this tile represents, right? This Hebrew tile, these two cross sticks, whether they're standing straight up like the St. George cross, so-called, or St. Andrew's cross, these are the tiles, man. Stop trying to hijack the most indigenous symbol on the earth plane. Two cross sticks. Mark, sign, signal. We got covenant, right? So you're hijacking the covenant because who's already in code? <clears throat> right, right. And all these, you know what I'm saying, extending Scotland. So you wonder why Tacoma say it's tribed up with the British, so to speak. You know what I'm they got family in that area, man. They, they've been knights and tribed up for a long time. England, Britain, you know what I'm saying? This is a swarthy situation. I, I say England, you think white. I say Scotland, you think white. I know, man. That's how the story's been told to us. I'm talking about the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, man. Swarthy Charles, man. Holy Roman Emperor, my nine. 1525? Seems like when it was all happening, right? When the first major invasion with the Spanish situation was happening, but we know that the Spanish are swarthy, right? We just talking, we're just talking more. We're just talking more. we just talking treaties of peace of friendship, right dead smack in the middle of the Chickamauga War, where these Nagas right here wasn't signing no treaties. That's why you went to war against the all man, because they weren't signing no treaties. This is recent history, man. Managa, this is recent history, but it goes back at least a thousand years before that to 775 and the American Empire of Kalalus, ruled by Sylvanus told Texas or Solomon the Builder with his ships of Solomon, the swan boats. Managa, Hebrew word of the day, swan, barber, Managa. And again, that's why you go from straight up chick war. 
So while you're going from the chick my war Right, chicken maga, chicken maga, and you go barbary war. Man. First barbary war, all the way down, right? All these are barbary war, barbary war, but not Hebrew war. Hey. Barbary war, which let for, right? And you got this comment situation, this dragon popping off. Huh? Now, 1814, we got that the Choctaw leader started riding with Andrew Jackson against the creek and against the Seminole. So he tried to say he ended up. And we're going to read the comments, man. Someone said that Andrew Jackson was a Moor. <laughs> okay. So it seems like it's a more and more war. There's treaties of pieces of friendships happening at the same time. 1786, right middle. And we're just cracking this thing wide open, man. We're breaking the spell on it, man. Oh, no. Are these... Are these on Moore's flag too? I don't think so. Or else you would be riding against them uh, in 1814 with Andrew Jackson, right? The chief for the Choctaw wouldn't be riding against their own people, man. The Creek, the Seminole, the Cherokee. After the after the Kumsbell and the Choctaw started riding against the Seminole and, and the whole Confederacy that we had with the Creek and the Seminole and the Upper Muscogee, sometimes Monaghan, we could have worked together. After that, it was all bad. <laughs> all this was just. Bad. You still see how long it took him. You still see how long it took him, right? Finally, they said, all right, let's go back up. But man, all this was supposed to do of what Takun said, I can canoe and the chicken mob was popping off. This was the end of it, man. But the turning point ain't turning point was right here. And all Tecumseh was trying to do was get everyone against these invaders, man. Everyone to get them off our land. And they were making treaties, man. <laughs> Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. Oh, here's his picture. Look at that Negro on the coin, right? Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, 1500. This is, I mean, there's waves of this invasion from the Espanico and Columbus. Then again, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With this, you know, more and more war that we're discovering with these treaties in 1786. There's waves of them mooring us up, right? And now in 2021, we waking up, they still, Islam, brother, more, brother, you know, come learn some sciences with me. Only science I want to know from you. <laughs> we weren't there on the side of the chicken mob. Of why, you know, push ma taha, you know, had to uh, go against his brother Tecumseh. What was in it? That's the science I want. And they give it up to these chicken magra. Because look how long it took them 
to conquer the chicken mago, man. All this is still the chicken mago. All this is still the chicken mago. All this Cherokee Indian War, Seminole Second Creek War, this is still the chicken mago. Managa, I mean, you might as well just keep going, man. How long it take them, man? And, and then, and now, now we all whited out and mixed out, and now we just half breeds and stuff. Come on, man. It ain't, it ain't even been that long. It's been a hundred years, man. It's been a hundred years, man. Man, I run Chicago for that all the way. You making treaties in 1786? We're gonna meet right there. We're going to discuss the sciences, man. man wow. We do it for our noggins, man. We do it for the sheep. When we do it for the sheep, we know that X marks the spot, man. Because this is all it was for them. The two cross sticks, man, coming together. Two families. Judah. Joseph. One drop. One drop. One by. Digging, on it, man. I appreciate that. Y'all been here, and I'm really proud of this drop because it did take three days and about 12 plus attempts. I can't imagine. I can't even explain the frustration <laughs> of finishing a three-hour video and then looking and saying, "Oh, you you only recorded 22 seconds? Oh, okay. I did three-hour and some video, but it's." 22 seconds long <laughs> and have that happen about three times to you or you know your system just crashed and all your information gone like and then you still end up doing a four hour plus video hey man that's all praise for why man all praise for why you know what i'm saying I'm, and I'm, i apologize man i'm using a new system i know that they're messing with this it's the best way I can get it out right now. I'm still working on other ways too, man. You know, we got, you know, we got to re up, man. You know, we got to get ahead of them, man. Uh, all my other system uh, software ain't working to record. So I'm trying to work with Zoom. I know it was real sketchy with the audio. Some of that was me probably, but I don't know, man. They were dropping us out completely. So I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we, we know what's popping. We know what's happening, but. I'm gonna do my best this time to make some adjustments and I hope the audio is much better. You know what I mean? But I, pro you know, I apologize. I know it's four hours long and uh, we just popped off, but this is a very special drop. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are digging it. And there's a lot of great dropping here, man. So, you know, do your best to, you know, get the lead for y'all. And, uh, you know, this is the type of stuff that, that you pack your eat the pack twos. So make sure you pre-order your eat the pack two or just order them now because they're about to drop probably about a week, week and a half. So allow why for everyone who's pre-ordered eat the pack two. If you're still waiting on the present pack or eat the pack, I got y'all. We're getting busy this week and to water for your support and your patience. Yeah. <laughs> Get that tribe of music for sure. Five eyes. Okay. A few great comments right quick before we get into this uh Gartha. You know, we're gonna go deep right right quick, man. I'm not we're going deep. We're going deep tonight. Contested Taylor A. I was just all oh, praise the most high. Kind when you started talking about Chickamauga, I got up and started looking for my granddad's side of the family tree that my cousin put together a long time ago. What do I see? My family member Robert Taylor was killed in the Battle of Chickamauga. 
Wow. David was killed in the Shana, Shenandoah Valley, uh, Virginia, and Jesse, the youngest, was badly wounded at the Battle of Shiloh. I said, wow, I got some work to do. I made it to 23, 23.43 uh, 23 minutes all right, of your video. Had to stop it. Read that section on my granddad family tree. Mind blown. Now I'm back to the video. Learning much of how I can drive much of how family m-h-o-e hey m-h-o-e man it's so much fun man. you know what i'm saying it's all praise uh hawaii man for the creative ones man just you know praising hawaii let, letting you know to put hawaii first man most high over everything m-h-o-e shout out to jay white we've been talking about jay hall <laughs> We were talking about the whites, Jay Hall. Uh, you know what the definition of the whites is. You see how it's spelled W I G H T or W I H T. Living being, creature, person, something, anything. <laughs> uh oh. Thing or demon. Bang. Yeah. All right. You know. I mean, enough said. <laughs> You can go on. on. We got doing that Isle of Wight too. Jim and Nagy. So there's two ways to look at white people. You know what I'm saying? One ain't got nothing to do with color. It's just about the frequency. You did. Let go. Shannon Williams says these Moors walk around with those hats and that tassel swinging as though they are better, not really doing the whole research. You know what? Look. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm never, you know, on some, you know, hating on everybody type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like for us, it's all about respect. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we want to respectfully have an investigation. You know what I'm saying? And for, for the most part, I ain't gotten, we never, you never see me going back and forth with nobody like that. So I think that they understand that it's a mutual respect. You know what I'm saying? I understand you got to ride for your tribe but you gotta be accountable, you know what I'm saying? And you gotta you gotta understand that we've, we've been facing accountability first. So we got the upper hand when it comes to the accountability part, <laughs> cause we had to first be accountable, then get back in code. Then we can digest our history. And now we are running into what's happening in Chickamauga in 1786, Managi. By the time you meeting us right here, we already did did the accountability and, and, and got one with our creator. We started keeping the code. Now you're going to have to really, you know what I'm saying, be humble at this point, you know what I'm saying, because you're dealing with the creator. And I advise anyone under any titles, you know what I'm saying, to be very humble when it comes to Hawa. Hawa. Jay Hall is the art of land thievery. They stole tartary the same way and wrote them out of history. That's what happens, man. The rise of history, man. Uh, Star Ace 66 says, uh, you put the nail in the coffin, Psalm 83, the battle prayer, the Confederacy, man. Psalm 83, drop a shirt with the towel on the front, on the front and our battle on the back, make it happy. Hey. That's a great idea. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad I read this again because I definitely gonna come with some town shirts, man. It's all happening. Chickamauga, Muscogees, and Cherokees, who was not beat for the BS. I got you, Red Feather, man. Definitely. They were like their very system. She was solid to his success as king. She was also there in the beginning before the waters were developed. Barashi, Barashi with wisdom, man. Shout out to Derek Perry. Derek Berry, my noggin. She was happy and delighted in the presence of Hawa, of the creator. Ahab, Derek Berry, copper color nation, the woolly hair is our uniqueness of our race. We the only ones that type of hair. Man, I dig, I could dig it, I could dig it. Uh, Zilueta, Ray Zilueta, OG wave surfer, what it do? He said, let go, Tennessee, Chickamauga over here. We was with Dragon Canoe, Tecumseh, the Preston, Pop Ball Con Drop. We did it again to buy Shadow Wild Family, man. Ray Zilueta, 
Hey, hop to you, man. Greg Sykes. I heard this term using in a movie. The Sarah since now, I know they were indigenous people. Kaka, kaka, kaka. <laughs> Trey Ali said, me to myself. Tomorrow I'll do research on X, Y, and Z. Contra, here's some research <laughs> on X, Y, and Z. Man, that's funny. Homie always on point. I ain't even watched it yet. Hey, hey, I'll try. hey a lot of white. Only the way, man. Because as soon as I saw this, you know, we were live at like, uh, man, what? From like 12.30 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. Uh, the previous uh, early morning. <laughs> and uh, then I saw Caramel was live. I didn't know he was live. Uh, so I just happened to come in live right after he finished his live. And I was nuts because I didn't plan that. I didn't know he was live. I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> um, and it ended up he was talking about Virginia and Nagas in Virginia. Like, man, right on time, right? So the way was amazing, man. And you know what I'm saying? Trey, we all part of it. Charles Johnson, man, also gives me that peace and dignity. Amaru Khans, Amaru Khans of Turtle Island, man. And this is Dragon Island, man. We popping off, man. <laughs> Star A66 says Andrew Jackson was a more. Let that sink in. Man, I tell you, man. I tell you, man. It, it is sinking. It is sinking, man. They say George Washington, you know, was also a more, right? I mean, Washington, right? Yeah, let that sink in, man. Who who were their swarthy enemies, man? All right, all right. See, see like YouTube's growing with my sound. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we getting that, and we got that. And, you know, all praise the wall. We're going to keep going. They can't stop driving. And I tapped out the wind. <laughs> I love to Steven Torres, man. My bro stayed up a four hour live from 1230 to 430 a.m. That's an interesting time period, man. I got some interesting wave service at that time, man. <laughs> My bro uh, rocked the wave, man. I appreciate you, man. He said, down goes Frazier. Got to get in the replay. MOJJ, Mem Sauce over Jesus. Uh, but hey, the MOGJ, man. Oh, come on. Man. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, what a beautiful thing to surf. Way with the tribe, man. Hey, Ma said, let the truth be told. Ah, M H O E. Hey, man. My five eyes, my myself, man. We're popping off the M H O E line, man, of garments, man. So look out for it. And uh, it's great, man, to be in the flow with the bro five eyes, Ma. Get that tribe up music, man. Freddie B, what it do? I love getting the drop at four, five, six in the morning. Night Dragons, man, man, we top of the soul, we top of the soul, Dragons. Courtney Triplett said, M-H-O-E, let's go, four, three, two, hey, hey, I appreciate y'all. Uh, Somebody said, uh, what is Patreon address? I don't have Patreon, not on Patreon, but you can go dig off Natural Bylaw, just popped off his Patreon, and you know what I'm saying, it's one try, one vibe, man, so, you know, you go. So bad, bro, man, you be supporting us, you know what I'm saying? Everyone's, man. Hey, we're talking about a flag, the covenant, and our story, and you know what I mean? The battle flag, the covenant, our story. If we're going to talk, I mean, we might as well, you know, jump in this Templar classroom and talk some of this code, you know what I mean, with the bro Templar. For a few minutes, and your classroom because he's in on these, you know, co colonial soldiers of Virginia, 1700s, and we talking 1700s too. And man, love the Blazers 71, MHOE. Shout out to King Drop 432. Hey, I appreciate you, man. You know what I'm saying? See, when you are in Caramel's flow, you're in the flow over here. We got one tribe, we got one vibe. And it's all about that 360 dragon flitter perspective, man. All right, all right. So check it, man. Enjoy some drop, okay? and then uh, have a nice agar. We're gonna get out of here on some agar, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> you know, what I mean, hey, 
it is talking about the land of the cop color cops right here in the Maru Kaha, man. Matter of fact, man, let's um yeah, yeah. Let's jump in with the code though for a few, man. Hey, I get in the classroom with the bro X marks the spot. You got the uh, platonic dragons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all happening with the tip. straight to the point and um, try to try to do this in a, in a single take um, I wanted to well let me start here um, I noticed that I've noticed that over the last couple of days um, in the copper thread taking on a different rocks that's coming at you um, that there's a, a thing going on <laughs> um, where where, uh, where there, there seems to be a transition you know for the last two to four years we've been harping really hard on you know to see and to see clearly when it comes down to the code and um, I'm seeing to be transitioning to uh to be phase you know <clears throat> and i'm reminded of the matrix when uh when neo first started uh showing his power when he said more and he's trying to turn around to morpheus and gave him bad news <laughs> and morpheus stopped him after seeing what he could do right and saying you know the oracle only told you what you needed to hear you know what i'm saying he had to learn, like everybody else, there's a difference between knowing the path and walking it. And I think that's where we're at. You know, in keeping with the Matrix theme, you know what I'm saying? You know, we, it, it, we're, we're in the Matrix, in the, in the trilogy, you know, we're, we're really only at the, 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 the end of the first movie where, you know, Agent Smith pops off 9 to 13 times, you know, Neo, Neo drops. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Right? He falls in that stupor. And he refused to submit to the stupor, right? And he chooses to uh, choose up. And he gets back up. And what's his first word when he stands up? He like, no. You know what I'm saying? And and that was the first time, despite being able to, 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 to use his abilities in the Matrix, right? That was the first time he was able to do what? See the code. And from then, everything else just popped off. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I think that's kind of kind of where we're at right right now. You know, I always get awkward uh, or feel weird uh, in these moments. But we seem to come, you know, just always do. You know what I'm saying? Um, so let's uh, take care take care of uh, a few things first and foremost. You know what I'm saying? So you know, much of to everybody out there. Digging on a drop, surfing the wave, uh, and, and much a hop to you for all the support um, in every way that you support. Oh, you know what I'm saying, uh, please, as always, uh, click on the uh, the link and uh, check out the uh, in the GoFundMe and uh, continue to support uh, you know the family down in, in Texas. Oh, and with that being said, let's do a, a quick check in on the fundraiser. Where are we at? Oh, wow. All right. So right now, you know what I'm saying? We didn't we didn't increase on the donate on the donors themselves. Much, much you know, Tawada and much a hop to you. We we, we we appreciate you right now. We we didn't we're at that uh six to eleven mark, you know what I'm saying? So 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 we just we, we, we just now coming out the blocks. 
top it off. You know we 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 ready to enter that 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 stride, and uh, I appreciate y'all, especially all the repeat uh, donors. So so we it's on and popping. The waters are flowing. The fires are burning. You know what I'm saying? The air is blowing, and the earth is uh, solidifying. <laughs> wow. All right. Now, um, what are we gonna do today? Well, what we're gonna I'm gonna do today is um, what I'm gonna do today is uh, make sure my water is good. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do first. <laughs> water. Oh God, be on it. What you got going on? Oh man. All right, so we got some Zion music playing. Check on the water. What? Dragons are popping off in China. <laughs> some of these drugs, I gotta go back and watch again. <laughs> Where, where's my water? My water. There we go. That water. Get a refresh real quick. There All right, go. We refreshed. We good. All right. So, uh, what I like to do is um, this ain't gonna get linky. Um, this ain't gonna be long. Um, this, I'm gonna try to make this kind of direct and straight to the point. Um, what I want to do today is try to break down the code in layman's terms. And I think that that's important. Boil down the code. Um, into two words, and you know, framer and shaper, right? Okay. And before we begin, uh, let me say it this way: the the two words uh, that encapsulates the code that 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 the code is almost the the un the unspoken truth of the code is um, be genuine, be genuine. Now, speaking of the matrix, at this point, <laughs> you, you can take the blue pill, <laughs> X is day left, and believe whatever you want to believe. <laughs> Or, you know what I'm saying, you can take the rap pill and uh, let's see how deep this really, really, really goes. Choose right? up, choose up. So that's your, your, your quote unquote YouTube spoiler warning, <laughs> <laughs> as it were. <laughs> All right. Be genuine, right? Now, now, why do I say that? Because I think I mentioned it before. Um, I think I mentioned it before. Um, in the last drop or recently that I would rather have a honest enemy than a lion friend right you'd rather have an honest enemy than a lion friend and that goes back to simply being genuine the B being the framer right to be Hawa and then the shaper would be genuine, the word genuine. Mm. So let's dig on it. Because you, once you once you once you get this, <laughs> it's not you not you can't unlearn it. <laughs> right? Now genuine. Let's let's, let's 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 go deep. Now genuine, meaning what? Natural, right? not acquired from Latin, Gen uh, genuineness, native, right? Natural, innate from the root, uh, 
Jinjineer. What is that? Gig, gig, gignir? Uh, to beget, right? Produce. From the pie. Star, G-E-N-E, or gene, right? To give birth, beget. Perhaps influence, inform, and uh, inform by contrasting um, adulterineous, almost sound like adultery, right? Um, spurious. Alternate abnormality is from Latin genu, knee, right? We always talk about bending the knee. From a supposed ancient custom of a father, right? Acknowledging paternity of a newborn, right? Uh, by placing it on his knee. Now, don't you get the, and I hope you, you, you immediately um, what probably should come to mind um, thinking about Max Spears, right? Is what? Santa Claus putting the children on his knee, right? Granting granting them their quote unquote Christmas wish, right? Meaning really proceeding from its reputed source, a repute a, 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 is its reputed source, excuse me, is from 1660s, right? 1660s, right? But we're talking about natural. Shout out to Natural by Law. Let's go. And if you ain't been on that Ether bus, you better hop on it <laughs> and hop on it quick. <laughs> <laughs> hop on it and hop on it quick. All right. Now, let's take it to uh, Webster's Dictionary. Genuine. An adjective, right? There's a Latin again. From what? Enos or its root, see gender, right? Meaning what? Native, right? Belonging to the original stock, hence real, natural, true, pure, not. So, so, and I remember we were digging on the code drop, right? How, how, how white means pure. So you can have a a pure Naga mm. who is quote unquote black, but he is considered white. <laughs> Not spurious. Or you can have a W I G H T. Huh. So you gotta choose your whites, man. That's <laughs> right, false or adulterated. Right, you unadulterated. The Gauls are supposed, allegedly, right, supposed to be genuine descendants of the Celt. Supposedly, right? Allegedly. Vices and crimes are the genuine effects of depravity as virtue, right? And piety, right? We're talking about the nine worthies, mm. are the genuine fruit of holiness. Bang. Amen. Get in the classroom. You know me. I go back and get real cozy with my brother. So, man, I just want to make room, man. You know what I'm saying? For this bright year, man. You know, um, you know, I'm, I'm also very proud of, man. I mean, just day one wave surfers, man, always has been nothing but supportive and has really, you know, taken the drop. And, you know, I mean, just, you know, popped off, man, so many new layers and new levels of it, man. And, you know what I'm saying? I just really appreciate always, you know, being able to come back, man, just to, you know, a lot of that original flow with my bro, Kuli Mayo, you know what I mean? And, you know, we always enjoy, you know what I'm saying? Just bouncing great information, man, you know, back and forth. So, loud wah, man, for the great family, man, that's, you know, been side by side, slaying these hijacks, slicing and dicing through Hijack City. And, man, always by my side, man. My right and my left is my bro, Kuti Mayo, man. Aha, ooh. He found a great book, man, Colonial Soldiers of Virginia. We talking the 1700s? We definitely talking Chickamauga, right? Yeah, we talking 1700s. So it's right on time, like I said. I didn't even know he was dropping, and it's happening. Just like the 10th floor, man. 
It's just happening. It's all happening. Fall back. Let's get a couple minutes of this. And then we're going to belly flop into this Agarthur. And we'll see how long we can get it. Um, Mr. Uh, Mythos. Shout out to Mr. Mythos. We're going to enjoy some of this. And shout out to the audience that sent this to me. I'm sorry. I, I don't. I forgot the name. Like, you know, I, I know the name, but I forgot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know it. Like when you say it, I'm going to know it. But I just got a bunch of tabs up. And unfortunately, I do not have it on my mind bone at the moment but i love you i appreciate you and i got a lot of drop up that y'all saying and i get back later shalaka in the fast man <laughs> we're gonna get to this a guard the man and and then maybe even get on out of here with some meta comic drop and aqua type battle is dropping in the copper thread like the templar said we be going up in the copper thread man hey Shout out to the real ones. Take the wheel. Yeah, I had a crazy day today, guys. So, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> people are getting pretty desperate out here in Costa Rica with the COVID thing, a lot of jobs lost, and uh, they're going, they're doing desperate things like stealing the breakers and the fuses from my electrical uh, meter that's outside. So I woke up with no electricity today. I wanted it was very early, you know. Oh, well, and uh, just all my plans got ruined. Uh, a lot of expense, expenses trying to get it fixed, and it was a crazy day. But here we are. All right, and I appreciate you guys being here. All right. We got the the uh, fuses replaced. No worries. All right. So I just want to read the back of this book real quick. What he says, this is what mainly, when I saw it listed as a source and a lot of good uh, documents, I, you know, I had to get this book, and then I read the back. And so it says here, American military history mm. uh, begins. One second. Begins with the establishment of the Virginia colonial militia in the 17th century. This ill trained militia was the colony's only defense against Indian attacks and invasions by hostile powers. The records they left behind, fragmentary uh, and widely scattered, are prized by genealogists because they can be used to establish a place of origin or to prove that a particular person existed in a given locality at a specific time. The difficulty has always been to locate the records and to make them accessible, all right? So that's always been, I guess, the, the hardship, right? Um, you know, these records were not available to us, honestly. You know, they, they, they made it hard. Okay. So with the publication of Virginia's Colonial Soldiers, this book right here, that problem is now behind us, guys. From research based on county court minutes and orders, bounty land applications and warrants, records of courts, martial, county militia rosters, Hennon statues at large, the Draper manuscript, and manuscripts in the public records office in London, we now have an authoritative, again, authoritative, authoritative register of Virginia's colonial, colonial soldiers. A record so comprehensive, guys, so comprehensive that it may cause the genealogical history of Virginia to be rewritten. All right, we're rewriting history, and you know we've been doing that. We've been doing that since day one. We're doing that since day one. All right. I'm gonna continue here. Where were we? <laughs> No, it is a merely a dry catalog of names and dates. The military found it necessary, for instance, to resort to size roles to prevent multiple enlistments by the same soldier and to apprehend those who deserted. All right, so a lot of the time they want to get very specific just to make sure those two things didn't happen right there. The size roles published here routinely give the soldier's place of nativity, his age, his residence, occupation, and physical appearance uh -oh. or description uh oh all right his physical description you guys ready sometimes the enlisting officer recorded his impressions of the soldier was described as being fond of liquor john wade as having a villainous appearance john edward as being thing nosed pock pitted and intoed john brigman as being spare made with a wrinkled visage and thomas deacons as being a likely handsome fellow 
nor was frontier warfare pleasant. John Potter was shot through his heel and had his jaw broken by a tomahawk in 1754. John Potter, man. Hmm. And William Shaw was taken prisoner in 1756 and had his toes cut off one by one. And so on and on. Though, of course, not all the records are so interesting and informative. I'm going to show you an example of what he means. Little is known about the ordinary people of colonial Virginia. But though they left no diaries or journals, we have the rare privilege now, guys, of coming almost face to face with them in this book. Mm. All right? Let's break some spells. So right quick, the bro's about to pop off. I'm gonna belly fly right here, like in the midst of things. He's about to be reading some of these descriptions and pay attention, man. You know, they're gonna say where they're coming from and just pay attention to how many swarthy noggins is being, you know, talked about and where they're from, man. It's gonna be mind blasting as to really what things is looking like in the 18th century. Like I'm saying, that's that period, man, where it all happened, right? Like everything changed. Every perception, like, you know what I'm saying? How, that was the last straw, man, from reality to this Matrix red, man. Can you dig it? Let's go, man. Carmeo, a pop off, managa. We go. John Collins, English, but he's dark with dark brown hair. Uh -oh. William Smith, he's a sailor. He's English, dark with dark brown hair. John Williams, English, swarthy with dark brown hair. He's English, but he's swarthy. So swarthy. Can I get a so swarthy? Where's Kiowa at? You sleep in Kiowa? All right. <laughs> Pop up. James Clark. Well, John Williams. English, swarthy with dark hair. James Clark. English, swarthy with dark brown hair. English. Swarthy as well. English. 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 The Europeans being called swarthy people. Come on. Moses Johnson. Planner, Virginia. Black as a mulatto with black hair. Whoa. Black as a mulatto. <laughs> black as a mulatto? You're going to have to rethink Mulatto. <laughs> yeah, whoa. Because, you know, they would say Mulatto was like African and Indian mix. You know what I'm saying? So what is it, man? Black is a Mulatto. Bang. All right. Would that be a possible Indian? Hmm. Could it be? William Colbert, Westmoreland. Plander, he's Scotch. He's fair-skinned. James Hooper, Weaver English. Lawrence Johnston. He's Irish. He's fair-skinned. Samuel Cummins, bricklayer. He's from Virginia. He's swarthy and much freckled. He's swarthy with freckles. <laughs> He's dark-skinned with freckles. He's a so-called black man with freckles. All right. Thomas Toole, English, fair and light hair. Charles Travis, a planner. He's Scottish. He's swarthy. A Scottish, swarthy, brown hair, pitted with blemish and right eye. Very Swarthy Scots, huh? <laughs> Lego. We just been talking them roosters, huh? Just do the connection, man. Descriptive. All right. John Waters. He's from, he's English. He's dark. All right. Benjamin Rogers. He's from Nansamon. He's from Virginia. He's dark. Richard Hines, Virginia. Dark and swarthy, but very. Managa, do you see what the wars was looking like when you look at the Battle of Chickamauga and all this stuff like that? We had Nagas on both sides, Indians on both sides of the war, Managa. You know what I'm saying? We had Nagas not doing none of that war talk unless it was against all these Nagas. And really, when did they have time for all this internal war that they try to feed us? You know, 1776 and, you know, the, you know, these Americans trying to get free from the from the uh, British and yada yada yada, and then it's this American uh, Confederate versus Union. How's all that popping off? My not, you know, sorry, my bro, Cootie Mayo. It's bro. I mean, my not, when did they have time to fight these other wars? I mean, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Seems like an interesting time to be having some type of internal war when you have all these Swan Knight Barbary war, you know, Cherokee, Chickamauga, Creek, Seminole war, man, and you know what I'm saying? All these treaties, you know what I mean? Like, we gotta put all this, you know, we're just, putting, we're just getting started. We're just popping off. And, hey, 
wakey wakey welcome back my nuggets <laughs> help me put this thing because you know everything you never know what's so fine yeah we have this internal warfare start i'm saying so yeah we're reading you know it's like with that flag drop let's see we had a drop that had a lot of these flags on it So this one right here is supposed to be Preston. Some of Preston's troops carried this flag. All right, the McCown Black McCown battle flag used at least by at least some in Kentucky. All right, now you'll say McCown was of Scottish heritage, but we know we're talking swarthy Scots, right? Right, right. Scottish, yeah. Oh, Scottish, yeah. Same town, swarthy, swarthy Scots. Got it, got it, okay. So he's saying that, oh, I, I got it for my Scottish hair, my Scottish heritage, man. He, he got it from the Andrews, my not. He got it from Clan Bros, right? Now called St. Andrews Cross. You know, stuff that we went over, my not. But you know, this is what they're later flying, you know, to try to represent themselves at the battle of this chick mob. So, Virginia's flag. All right, so the bro's talking to Virginia. You know what I'm saying? These uh, this this colonial army at this time, and you know what they fly, right? You know what they fly, and you know where they got it from. And that's all we saying, man, is that we back my nugget. Oh, we back my nugget. Two cross sticks, making it happen. Let's get a few more minutes from my bro, Cootie Mill. Hey, I man, for all the enormous recon. I mean, Eat the Pack was filled with, uh, you know, great PDFs from my bro, Karen Mayo, that we popped off. And I'm going to get with my bro, Cootie Mayo, man. We're going to do like a joint pack, man, with, you know what I'm saying, just just a combination of our recon, man. We're going to start just putting it out, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my bro. We're going to do, you know, a, a Cootie Mayo drop pack, man. It's going to be crazy. So let's pop off to all my noggins, Mem Sauce. MHOE, Kuri Mayo, take the wheel. Very black hair, dark and sorting, very black hair. James Young, he's a merchant. All right, who was the merchant, guys? Who was the merchants? You guys know already, right? You've been watching my videos. Who's the merchants? Who was doing all the trade? Who had the commerce? Who was in the ships? Who had the whole network? Scottish, fair, ruddy, and much pitted with smallpox. Mm. Philip Childress, Cumberland, Carpenter, Virginia, dark and swarthy, dark haired, slim made. David Collins, sailor, he's Irish, fair with dark brown hair and much freckles. Charles Bruce, planner, Scottish, brown with dark brown hair, has a swelling in the knees. John Penmore, he's an English, he's jello countenance with light hair, jello man. Edward Austin, Taylor, English, fair with dark hair. John Hooper, He's Irish, he's swarthy with dark hair, swarthy. Joshua Williams, he's from Virginia, he's swarthy with dark hair and much freckled. James Turner, he's from Virginia, dark with dark hair, well made. David Bailey, Chesterfield, shoemaker, Virginia, fair with light hair and handsome made. John Cotter, October 1755, remember we're basically in the 1700s mostly. He's about five or seven. He's a planner. He's Irish and he's dark with black hair. Has a wiggle in his walk. He has a little wiggle in his walk. All right. He, he walks like with a wiggle. He's dark complexion. Irish that walks with a wiggle. With a wiggle. All right. Edward Canifax, planner of Virginia. He's dark and swarthy with black hair and a flat nose. Flat nose. It's not pointy. It's not hooked. It's a flat nose. And he's dark and swarthy. James Turner, planner, Maryland, fair with brown hair. And my nugget, I mean, A.I. Caramel, 19 or 17, like 56. Bad, man, I mean, it's real, for real. I just want to go, you know. I was 1756. So that was 20 years before the Chickamauga were rolled up on specifically 
and went to war with Dragon Canoe in there. I'm just trying to put this together. My bro Cootie Mayo helping us crack this code. Right, 1756. 1755, 1756, oh man, now we can put things together a little bit and line them up. So whenever this enlistment or when all this stuff's popping off, you know who they went to war with. But not <laughs> after they got their situation straight, man, they came right to Chicago, those that weren't doing the treaties. That's like them saying, oh, those that aren't being vaccinated, we going right to y'all. Cause you don't want to, you don't want to make no deal with the devil. You don't want us to put no devil juice in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't want that. We don't want that devil juice, man. No deal. But the green man, yo, man, get in this classroom, man. I see a lot of familiar wave surfers in here. Rose Jones is doing phenomenal, man. Keep supporting it. Keep sharing it. And it's just uh, really inspiring, my nugget, to tap in and tune in and just see the tribe grow. On multiple platforms, it'd be one tribe, one book, one vibe. You know what I mean? There's multiple platforms don't exist, man. We got one ether flow. You know what I'm saying? And my bro Kuti Mayo, got the tribe, man. Get in it, man. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. You know what I'm saying? If I may, just right quick, we're just talking to Kum say and Aquata. Bam. The record keeper. She always keeps it real. You know what I'm saying? Real trill around here man she dropped this drop from nowhere man i mean it's called the uh <laughs> epa's registered antimicrobial pro This, I haven't really connected this my quad yet, man, but I know there's some interesting ones when I was tuned down here. What was it? Page six. All these names, they mean something. You know, so they really kind of recon all of them and find some type of drop that's going to lead you to the indigenous truth. And what do you have here? Tecum say. She said they're using our priest king flow, man. And their serums and stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Now this is supposed to be effective against HIV. Takum say, <laughs> who's Meta Common? Who's Geronimo? We know Geronimo. That, that sounds familiar. Masa Masa Soit So for whatever reason, they're choosing different chiefs. You know what I'm saying? Masa Soit. I pulled something up. All right, uh, Meta Common. I think Time Battle dropped this, dropped, dropped this one. Someone pulled a biography of Chief Masasoy from ThoughtCO.com, Native American hero. Now, they're calling him a hero because he was known to the Mayflower Pilgrims, leader of the Juan Panoa tribe, also known as Grand Sachem. All right. <laughs> Masasoy played a major role right and the success of the pilgrims so he helped the pilgrims majorly right so you know you already know maybe he just had a good heart man. <laughs> uh conventional narratives of myself paint to paint the picture of a friendly indigenous person who came to the aid of the starving pilgrims oh boy now would he regret this today probably probably <laughs> even joining them in what's called the first thanksgiving oh so that that's why they named it a microbial situation. You know what I'm saying? After Masasoit. Same name. You got the Kumse, Meta Comet. Oh, let's do a quote on the Meta Comet. So Meta Comet is, okay, Meta Comet is the second son of Masasoit. Okay, that's Meta Comet, known in English as Philip of Pakanoket or King Philip in a night attack on swamp fortresses in Rhode Island, 12th of August, 1675. The last force of Indians was defeated with great slaughter and King Philip being slain among them. It's a lot of history, huh? 
it's a lot of history for you. And you go look at some of these names and and dig on them, man. Love to the Aqua Tie Battle. I know that this uh the Coom say is very crazy. Just I got it up here. And that it's all connected with these brands and anti microbial products. <laughs> what are they trying to say, man? It's just a little crazy, a little crazy stuff, man. Hey, I have the aqua tire. You're man, already, man, for some Agartha dismountage, man. Love to Mr. Mythos, man. Fair use in your caboose, bro. Man, we're just going to fall back, do some criticism and stuff, some wave surfing. You know what it is, man. And it's all good, man. Shout out to the tribe. Let's get deep. Y'all ready to get deep? Y'all ready to get deep with the drop? Fall back, man. In India, a truly ancient legend that predates the religion tells of a large island of unparalleled beauty that long ago lay in the center of a vast Central Asian sea, just north of the modern-day Himalayas. A race of godlike people with strange powers lived isolated on the island. Un now, I'm just going to let y'all surf the wave. Y'all know where India superior are. You know, when they start turning you into green men, <laughs> right? All right? When they start turning you into ogres, you already saw what happened. My bro, Dragon Child, bro brought it out with the green situation, right? So we ain't got to, you know, I mean, to get my you know what it do, right? When they start putting that green on us, right? <laughs> that ogre green, right? Yeah. It's the ogres, man. We start talking. Okay, okay. just making sure y'all with me. Making sure y'all with me, man. You know who's with me, man? Man, shout out to my bro, Yosef the Real. He's live right now in the chat box. Said top a soul drop nation, man. I see you, man. Hey, tribe up, Yosef. Boom, boom. Hey, we live, man. Just popping off. Yosef don't know, man. He, he's with us live, but he do know he's with us live. You know what I'm saying? Only the way, man. They go. I'm getting the outside world except through a number of deep tunnels which stretched out in all directions, each hundreds or thousands of miles long, burrowing underneath whole continents and even oceans. Mm. On this isolated island, society flourished at an extraordinary rate. Science and the arts developed peacefully, never threatened by wars or epidemics, remaining purposefully hidden to protect their wealth of knowledge from the calamities that habitually plagued their brothers and sisters in the outside world. But a tremendous force was soon to befall the earth, and even this utopia was doomed to destruction if they stayed their place. Perhaps a great flood or an invading force of epic proportions. The exact reason is not known. But the story tells that the people of the island escaped by moving their society into those tunnels and rebuilding their civilization entirely. And what are the tunnels? They are those ancient tree roots, those giant trees that touch the firmament, also are rooted and have never been uprooted, just cut down, but they haven't been uprooted. So the tree system, so imagine like you having a tree for your tribe and you always have an attachment with that particular tree, these giant trees, when they're cut down, you don't want to leave your mama tree, right? You don't want to leave your tribal tree. So you stay within your tree, whether that's, you know, you're living up, you know, in the branches or way down in the roots, you know what I'm saying? That's your tree. You got to get to know your tree again, right? Let go. Entirely underground. No longer an island, but a subterranean kingdom leaving no trace on the surface, but the entrances to their tunnels, most caved in over thousands of years. For the purposes of our investigation, this lost empire will be known as Agartha. The hidden past to Agartha has survived 
are still said to exist in the ancient ruined cities of India, such as Ellora, Elephanta, and the Ajanta Caverns, as well as in other countries, such as in the recess of Afghanistan, in the Hindu Kush. This legend of the island is particularly strange, because if taken absolutely literally, obviously there is no ocean north of the Himalayas, but instead the Taklamakan and Gobi deserts. But if we took a trek into the arid, weather-bleached peaks of Everest, K2, or Kachanjunga, you may be advised not to trip over the countless fish bones, coral reef remnants, and fossils of sea lilies littered across some of the tallest peaks. It's a lesser known fact that the mighty Himalayas, often called the roof of the world, were once underwater, and that was the Tethy Sea, before the massive geological event known as a continental drift took place, and India collided into Eurasia, where it remains to this day. But what about those tunnels that supposedly stretch across the world? Why do parallel myths of gods or godlike people living in vast underground cities, protected from calamities above, appear in traditions and cultures across multiple continents, from Africa to America to Asia? Tracing its roots back to the dawn of civilization and perpetuated by the men who, through eyewitness testimony, have claimed to have visited the lost civilization themselves within the inner earth. I'm Mr. Mythos, and I welcome you to Truth or Lore. Be sure to subscribe if you love the mysteries of history like I do. Every sub is a massive support to the videos I make on my channel. The concept of Agartha is deceivingly simple. An inner earth kingdom linked to every continent of the world mm. by means of an extensive network of tunnels. Right. And we said before, like, can you get from the Grand Canyon to Peru underground through these tree roots that are still connected? Like, it's almost like they're all one tree, right? They're all connected in the roots, right? But our investigation is not an easy one. For I mean, Harriet Tubman did know the Underground Railroad. Right? Yeah. Railway? Underground caverns? Let's go, man. For such an expansive and archaic topic that is typically skewed with conspiracy theories, the truth of a genuine inner Earth civilization that may still exist today remains in obscure documents the riddles of Buddhist lamas, and the lost teachings of a so-called cult of Agartha, all of which we'll be exploring in this video. And of course, tunnel mythologies across the globe. But we may want to begin with a studious Frenchman by the name of Alexandre Sontier and the rather bizarre circumstances of how he came to be acquainted with the secret world accidentally letting it loose into the minds of Westerners, where the land of Agartha continues to be speculated upon and even searched for to this day. Alexandre Sontiev today is an enigmatic, almost unknown figure, but in the 19th century, the writings and teachings of this respected philosopher and occultist paved the foundation of French esoteric tradition. And this was largely due to his unquenchable curiosity for the mysteries of the world. Having gained much wisdom learning ancient Hebrew for his breakthrough work, Mission of the Jews, Sontiev was keen to deepen his understanding of the world and unlock more secrets through the even older language of Sanskrit ancestor to all modern Indo-European tongues, and in 1885, he hired a teacher. Through a connection, Santiev was introduced to a man who called himself Prince Harji Sharif, 
an impressive scholar who supposedly left India after the Indian Rebellion of 1857 and set up shop in France as a bird seller and professor of the Oriental languages. His true origins, however, are hazy. It is long thought that Harji was actually Afghan and perhaps went under a pseudonym. Nonetheless, the surviving manuscripts of their lessons preserved in the library of Sorbonne and written in exquisite script, proved that he was highly learned in what he taught and likely nobility. The mystery of Agartha was actually planted in the title of their very first lesson together. First lesson in the Sanskrit language to Monsieur Marquis saint yves Delvedre Pari, this 8th of June, 1885, by teacher and professor H.S. Bhagwandas of the Great Agarthian School. Saint-Yves intently asked his teacher, what was this Great Agarthian School? Only to receive vague answers and continue on with the lesson. But the French occultist didn't give up easily. Studying with Harji three times a week, several notebooks were compiled, including excerpts from their informal conversations together, written out in Sanskrit, which contained phrases such as elements for the Agarthian rite alone for the use of initiates, the holy land of Agartha, and how was he able to leave Agartha? Holy land. Over the course of their lessons, it becomes clear that Harji did talk at length with saint Yev about some land of Agartha and its mysterious protector, the master of the universe, who was in many ways a spiritually and physically superior being to any other in the world. Whatever Agartha truly was, this realm was supposed to preserve great wisdom and ancient knowledge most notably to saint yev a secret 22-letter script known as Vatanian, which Harji told him went all the way back to the origins of civilization, precisely 51,900 BC, the confusion of the languages, and since then had been kept solely within the protected libraries of Agartha. If you watched my last video on Enochian, You'll know that Vatanian is another example of a proposed primordial or Adamic language. Harji could write this strange language as fluently and beautifully as his French and Sanskrit. For saint yev who had long obsessed over the secret and sacred roots of language. <laughs> Let me just go back, man. He's talking 22 letters. He had mentioned Hebrew earlier, and you can see a couple of very similar signs, right? ...of Agartha. If you watch my last video on Enochian, you'll know that Vatanian is another example of a... And what do we see, Managa? We see that towel. <laughs> Something like a dog. See that towel? We see like a mam sauce. See like a little, like the ayn and kuf. I mean, you see some similarities, right? Like a little noon situation, man. All right, we're just surfing away. Proposed primordial or Adamic language. But you see how far back that towel go. They say this script was what, 50 some thousand years ago, 50 some thousand years ago. <laughs> Don't they kind of look like a little Hebrew, like a little modernish? Uh oh, is that in the left? Uh oh. <laughs> My nugget. Hmm, let's go. Harji could write this strange language as fluently and beautifully as his French and Sanskrit. For saint Yev, who had long obsessed over the secret and sacred roots of language, Harji wrote his student's name in Vatanian characters with a side note. Here, according to your ardent desire, but really, you are not yet sufficiently prepared for Vitania. Slowly and surely. Very likely, without his teacher's knowledge, 
Solyev had amassed extremely detailed notes from his time with Harji Sharif and compiled them into a book entitled Mission of India in Europe, Mission of Europe in Asia. This work is, without a doubt, the first thorough description of Agartha in the Western world. Pay close attention, as these details will be important when we cross-compare with other sources. According to Sontyev, the hidden land of Agartha lies deep below the surface of the earth, somewhere in the mountain ranges of the Himalayas. This enormous underground complex of cities and a population of millions is ruled by a sovereign pontiff known as the Brahatma and his two colleagues, the Mahatma and the Mahanga, upholding the highest of values in their authority. As per knowledge, the entire collected wisdom of the ages is enshrined in his massive stone libraries, engraved in pillars in Vitanian script. He goes on to reveal that the Agarthian civilization was once above ground, but driven under and concealed from the rest of the world at the onset of the Kali Yuga, the present Dark Age cycle of Hindu chronology, around the year 3200 BC. Agartha is prophesized to reveal itself to the surface once again, but only once the world above attains spiritual balance in our governance. Long has this hidden civilization enjoyed advancement of technology at a greater pace than our own, including gaslighting, railways, and air travel. And when describing one of their most prominent technologies, saint Yves accurately predicts fiber optics over one century before their invention. He describes, quote, electrical pathways not made of steel, but of flexible glass, which do not imprudently deplete the carbon reserves of the planet, nor satellite with an iron framework, no less conducive to the spread of some cosmic plagues. Mm. Though a Garthian society flourishes, I gotta get that back. he describes, quote, electrical pathways, not made of steel, but of flexible glass. Mm. Electrical pathways sound like that wormhole drop a little bit, man. All right, let's go. Glass, which do not imprudently deplete the carbon reserves of the planet, nor satellite with an iron framework, no less conducive to the spread of some cosmic plagues. Though a Garthian society flourishes largely in complete isolation, they keep careful record of the discoveries of modern man even from the remotest regions, by means of a vast network of tunnels that span across Earth. But despite this, Agarthians have evolved separately from the rest of the world for so many years that they developed two tongues with which they are able to speak two languages simultaneously, a detail saint Yev was particularly fond of sharing. <laughs> So either they got literally two tongues or they speak fork tongue languages like English. Templar just broke down white. It could be pure, but we just got white as what? Demon creature, right? So, you know, is it two tongues or is it, is it a fork language? You know, truth or Lord, let's get a few more minutes for the dismount. Hey, hop to my noggins. We just falling back. In the back of the class. As an unwavering literalist, Mission of India was not intended to be read as allegory or fantasy. The French occultist was dead serious in every word he wrote and presented Agartha as a factual geographic place that can be found if one knows where to look. Hmm. The lessons went on three times a week and Harji would sign each of saint Yev's notebook pages with his monogram as a mark of approval. But as the pages and lessons continued, 
His signature grew sketchier and more abstract, with less and less care put into it, until his monogram was no more than a small cross. Mm. Finally, his mark disappeared for good, and it was at this point that their Sanskrit lessons ended, for reasons unknown. At this same time, hundreds of copies of Saint-Yev's Mission of India had been printed and were ready to be distributed across France when he suddenly withdrew the book and ordered every copy to be burned. The only remaining was a manuscript in his personal possession, and this probably would have been lost to oblivion, but saint Yev, who had no children of his own, left his belongings to his stepchildren, who then passed it on to the famous French occultist, Dr. Jean Oncos, better known as Papu. When Papu published Mission of India in 1910, he omitted several parts of the manuscript, which remain lost to this day. There have been various theories put forward as to why saint Yves ordered the destruction of his precious work. Some sources state that he acted under the orders of the great Agarthian school, as the wisdom revealed would not be understood, and publishing it would be like casting pearls before swine. While others go as far as to say that he was threatened with the dagger of the initiates if he were to reveal the secrets of Agartha. Regardless of the true reason, the public revelation of Agartha was ultimately withheld during saint Yev's life, but there is evidence that he remained true to his belief in the lost civilization. For example, he mentions Agartha and his three rulers by name in his epic poem from 1890, Joan of Arc, Victorious. In his conversations with psychical researcher Alfred Ernie in 1896, he stated many details of Agartha just as they appear in his book, and again insisted on their existence. Finally, he mentions Agartha in veiled terms in the major work of his final years, The Archaeometer. Okay, okay, this okay. is eToro, the leading social training platform over. That's the hijacks, man. We talking gateways, huh? Why did Alexandre Santiev find this odd and outlandish idea of Agartha so irresistibly fascinating, but more than that, genuinely believable? We can take a guess that during his previous period of learning the Hebrew language and studying the Jewish tradition of Kabbalah for his work, Mission of the Jews, he came across the ancient revelation that not only was the Garden of Eden an actual physical utopia located on Earth, but more accurately, deep within the planet, and could be reached by traveling through a cave. Specifically, this cave is the real-life location known as the Cave of the Patriarchs, branded by Jews as the Cave of Machpelah, and to Muslims as the Sanctuary of Abraham, serving as one of the most holy pilgrimage sites in both religions. Stated clearly in the Zohar, the foundational work of Jewish Kabbalah, as well as in other ancient sources from the region between Israel and the Dead Sea. The Garden of Eden should indeed be thought of as an inner earth kingdom. The timely parallel of Eden and Agartha should not be surprising though, as one considers that the belief in another more holy world inside of our planet earth is easily <coughs> one of the most consistent motifs in mythology. I can hardly begin to count the number of ancient cultures which allude to the inner realms of Earth, mm. if not in And I mean, as much as we hear about the hollow Earth theories and stuff like that, we can start to, you know, understand how these layers kind of unfold and how you do have uh, vortexes for a reason. And we know that there's layers upon layers upon layers. I mean, heaven's above, uh, you know, water's, water's above, water's below and all that stuff. So... Definitely there's a below and 
Christianity got us thinking, hell, 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 demon, demon, demon. I mean, why? Why did the Christian, you know, have that, uh, take that route to make everything down beneath us hell? You know what I'm saying? What if it's reversed? You know what I mean? You got to be able to reverse everything. Uh, but it's very, you know, very interesting, especially when you factor in the vortexes, the trees, Managa, the root system. What do y'all think, man? Y'all think um, Admiral Byrd and all that hollow earth, you know what I'm saying? You think there is utopias, you know, full. I mean, we've seen videos with water and then there's water beneath the water. We've seen all kind of movies where they go into some water vortexes and pop out in some show called Atlantis and they found the vortex in the water and they popped out in Atlantis. It's all kind of realms and stuff, right? And you know these oceans are all undiscovered. Then you got the dragon triangles. Oh man, a couple more minutes, my nigga. I'm just popping off. An entire civilization that resides there. Just in North America, for instance, the Navajos believe that their ancestors emerged from a subterranean world under the Navajo mountains. The Aztecs feel that they were one of seven tribes that came out of the caverns of Aztlan. The leaders of the Creek tribes state overtly that the earth opened up in the West and the Creeks came out. The Pawnee story of creation tells that all living things came from under the ground. The Zuni believe- What do y'all think about that, man? Leave some comments, man. Tell me, you know what y'all think. Obviously, we don't know. I don't know. You know, all we're going to do is, you know, dig on it. You know, at the, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? We'll never know until we know what's beneath us, what's above us. We still don't know what the moon is. Is it plasma? What's going on, man? Where's the firmament? How far is it? We don't know anything about our environment, our habitat. So let's stop fronting. That's why we can ask the questions. Look out for that flat drop coming in high believe that in the old days all men lived in caves at the center of the earth and again with the tunnels there is an old apache legend about a long and deep cave in arizona which is said to lead to an inner earth kingdom inhabited by a mysterious tribe i could go on about the legends found in central america south america and in other continents which i will expound upon later in this video particularly with closer parallels to Agartha, such as the lost city of Shambhala, and especially uh -oh. those legends which describe... Sibola, Sibola, Sibola. Shimbala. Shim. <laughs> Look, they're already studying Hebrew, trying to figure this stuff out, right? Why do you think they study Hebrew so much, man? <laughs> What's it got to do with Shimbala and Sibola and the seven cities? Coronado and them looking all over the place, looking, looking, looking everywhere, and this stuff could be right beneath them. They, they wouldn't know, right? It could be in a whole other realm. They wouldn't know. I mean, of course, Hawa is going to safeguard some of this drop. He can't give these hijacks access to all the drop, drop, drop. They're going to find some gold and some stuff, some manuscripts, but they ain't going to find a drop. Describe a network of tunnels. But for now, I will leave you with this quote from the book, Records of the Past, written by the influential Assyriologist, Archibald Sipes. There is a dwelling which the gods created for the first human beings, a dwelling in which they became great and increased in numbers, and the location of which is described in words exactly corresponding to those of Iranian, Indian, Chinese, Edaic, and Aztecan literature. Mm. Namely, in the center of the earth. Tree of life. saint Yev's second-hand account of Agartha. I mean, what's beneath Mount Rorima? What's beneath the Grand Canyon? How many portals can you jump into, man? Why are they protecting all this stuff, man? How does Antarctica play? Can you jump from Antarctica to the Grand Canyon? With some of these high Amazon queens? We just asking the right questions by now you know what i'm saying we're just getting started with this there's a lot more to it we're gonna get some more you know a little later you know what i'm saying but you know i just wanted to pop you off just know that 
we back, you know what I'm saying? Where we need to be beautiful cruising attitude around here, man. Out that blog, man, you know what I'm saying? For the great drive. Get the urban rig. We popping off, man. My bro, Cootie, man. We popping off, man. And it's all happening. Get the full drive over here. Because we already popping off, man. And uh, you already know, man. Told to cool, cool, man. Let's keep on rising and rising. Back of Texas. Y'all keep it zany, man. Shalom to the rivers, man. Allah, wah, wah.